Hi, I'm Daniel Watson. I'm part of the Humanitarian Engineering and Computing Group based in the Engineering and Computing Faculty and I'm going to talk about our work in Second Life. We've got a simulation and also a virtual version of the building that well, I'm sat in right now, basically. Okay, so we've used Second Life, which is a immersive virtual world where people inhabit avatars and they, they interact in this world much the same as we would interact on a day-to-day -day basis in, in the real world. Um, we've done two things with Second Life. We've developed a simulation which focuses on decision making and how these impact on uh, the various stakeholders that may be affected by a particular project. In our case, it's the construction of a dam in Sudan and, and it's based on a, a real life case. Um, we've also created a virtual version of the engineering and computing building. So, looking at the simulation first, basically it's based on an existing tabletop exercise that we do where um, students have information on a range of different sheets of A4 and they read the information on these sheets and they, then they debate the decision they would make based on this information. And we thought perhaps it could be more powerful if we immersed the students in the environments to which the text on the A4 sheets refers to. So um, basically we can't take the students all out into the middle of the desert in Sudan um, for obvious reasons. So we've recreated it in Second Life and so the students are either in the desert or they're on um, the actual co constructed dam as if the project has gone ahead. And there they're presented the information in a variety of ways, um, like there's text scrolling just in the, in, in the air. Um, and then they can debate, they can sit around in a circle and debate as they would round a table in the real world, but in this virtual space. Okay, so basically the engineering building in Second Life has three main roles. We see it's a marketing tool, um, a lot of the features of the real building we showcased in the virtual building, um, a communication and networking tool, people wherever they are in the world can come and visit us here in the engineering building, but virtually, and of course the big, the big plus is as an educational tool, so we have a range of classrooms and educational spaces within the building. I think my favourite thing about the virtual ECB is um, the possibilities that it opens. It, it's not necessarily one thing. I think we could have created a very true copy of the building, the real building in Second Life, but what we chose to do was not to do that. So there are slight differences in the virtual version. We haven't done a a true like-for-like like copy and we've created spaces that we can use for exhibiting project work or showcasing like research. We've got some classrooms and also we've got some, what I think is really exciting is we've got some spaces that is basically like being stood inside a, a photograph and surrounded by it in all, in all dimensions and some of the spaces we've got. We've got the lecture theatres that we have here to give people who aren't physically in Coventry a flavour of the building itself, but we also have a range of other spaces. Uh, the example that we have there at the moment is um, the surface of Mars. And obviously we can't send students to Mars, although that would be cool, but we can put them in this virtual space so it feels a bit like we are teaching on Mars. I think the feedback we've received on it is quite positive. Um, I think with Second Life it can be difficult to get people to get it if you're 
like me just sat here describing it but once you experience the space and wander around in it and see how your avatar's body language is quite similar to your own and the possibilities that are presented you can fly in second life for example um, I think people start to get it and they start to understand um, how effective it can be and, I, and the mind does strange things when you're in this virtual space where you suddenly start to feel like you're, you're there. It's hard to say if I'd change anything about it. I think where we are at the minute is we have an exciting resource that it would be really great to start using a bit more and as we use, start using it we'll start learning about what the good points are and what we can improve but I think the main thing for me is let's kind of use it and put it into our teaching and see see if all these exciting possibilities come true. Uh, w when I first became involved in work with virtual worlds my initial interest was its its applicability as a distance learning tool obviously with the virtual space people don't have to all be together in a room they can be in their bedroom in halls uh, on holiday on the beach wherever uh, but it was only when I really started getting into the work that I thought actually this can this can have a beneficial impact on the teaching or the training itself and there are possibilities that are opened up from being rather than being in a classroom being in a virtual space be it, um, be it say the Sudanese desert like we have in our simulation environment um, and just the things you can do in there the way you can re interact with each other one interesting thing is um, your avatar it isn't like your true self so students can feel less inhibited and more willing to take part in in like a training exercise so I think it's quite exciting what it can lend to the teaching itself